Hi folks, we are at Q Mark in, where are we? Rancho Santa Margarita. Rancho Santa Margarita. I'm actually really hungry right now. Margarita sounds good. Pizza, <laughs> not the drink. Um, we've got Kevin and Clint. Clint. So what do you guys do? We make uh, styli for CMMs and machine tools. Awesome. So I actually found out about QMark because they saw my post some time back when we, like eight hours into owning our Haas, decided to break our first Renishaw probe tip. So I've gotten to know you guys, and it's funny, your name has come up because we have some factories in our town that have used custom Renishaw probe tips. And as a self-taught machinist, I'm like, why would you need a custom tip? And all of a sudden you start learning about the different balls, the shanks, shafts, fittings, all that. So sure. is that is that a very layman's way of explaining some of that? Sure. Starting to explain that topic? Yes. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. There's, there's lots of custom work we do for a lot of automotive and aerospace. Cool. So can we do get a tour around? Absolutely. Let's do it. Yeah. So we... What do you want to do? Just go to the I shop? Want, no, I want, to, I want to see this metrology stuff okay. right here for sure. Let's go. Really clean, uh, really clean shop. I like the... This is, yeah, this is all the assembly area where we stock all of our components. Look at this. This is... I keep getting metrology. teased with CMM machines. Yes. Amazing. This is our Zeiss Duramax. Look at the tips. Oh. So here's the crazy thing. You look at that. Sure. Pull. Uh, pull. Pulled away towards you. Like a bend it away. There oh, you go. I don't want to break it. Sorry. <laughs> so what is this? Uh, that is a XXT adapter plate with a Thermex extension uh, on a 0.5 millimeter carbide sphere. 0.5 millimeter sphere. You, you said titanium. Titanium end caps and then with this is uh, graphite, graphite stem so why, or extension. Yep. Yeah, what, what's gr graphite? Uh, it's basically the graphite and the titanium um, just resists thermal expansion. So that's it's the thermal stuff that's more important than the weight. Yeah. Well, okay. and the weight, and the weight yeah. also. Weight also. Particularly on these Zeiss heads. Okay. They have a 15 gram maximum weight. Really? Yes. Holy cow! That's less than an ounce. 16 grams an ounce. Mm -hmm. No third. Um, go go do basic elementary school measuring reminders. Um, that's crazy. So you make you make what in this? We make everything. The whole thing. Yes. You machine. This top piece here? Yes. Awesome. And we assemble everything in house. Awesome. Yeah. Is any of this, like I think about, the first thing I think about when I think about Heimer tips or Renishaw probes is the, the, the breakaway nature, the, the shear. Is this meant to shear if it's impacted or is that not a thing on CMMs? It's not a thing that really happens on CMMs. Okay. I mean, it can, it can happen. Yeah. Um, well, this is breakaway anyway, I guess. I yeah, it, does, it definitely has like that magnetic release. Got it. So. I do, I'm not yeah. sure if you'll come. And the machines are much more sophisticated. They actually sense if something's not right, they'll stop. Right. I, it, so. It's like when I break my tips, it's because I'm not in protected position move and I'm just jogging around. And sure. Right. Oops. That's really cool. Yeah. But yeah, as I've started to learn more about metrology and measuring tools and CMMs and so forth, you start to realize why you need different size, length, balls, adapters. Yeah, it's, really it's all cool. about being more efficient. Cool. You know, if you can measure more features, and yep. less, you know, kind of tool changes, yep. then it speeds up the process. And this CMM will, when you program it, will do its own tool changes? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. yeah. It's all, it's all automatic. So cool. Awesome. So, yeah. Interesting, too. It looks like the table is ground, but then flaked in. I guess that's so it, that you don't get stiction when you put something onto it. Yeah. It's interesting. It just creates it, it keeps it flat, but you've got some relief grooves. You don't oil this, though, I assume. Uh, we do occasionally. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. okay. Interesting. Yeah. Very cool. We should probably have something running ahead of time. <laughs> no, thinking, okay. thinking about it. No, no, no worries. <laughs> something awesome. cool. So. Um, so we do all of our grinding in-house. Okay. Uh, carbide, graphite, uh, ceramic. Um, but yeah, that's everything we do. So you're grinding the extensions, the shafts? Extensions, stems, um, custom applications. We yeah. Do, uh, yeah, there's some special stuff that we do. These are, what I think of as looks like they're a six by 12 type service grinder, but it looks like you've got something on it to do sort of like a rotary grinding on it. Sure, Clint can yes. explain more. Yeah, this basically is a Herrick grinder. Really? Uh, yeah, it's basically a Herrick 618. Yeah, right. With, uh, it's made by TrueTech Systems. Okay and it has their roller unit 
Or it's their version of the dead truth. So you've got a drive mechanism here. Right, and so here's there. a motor that drives a worm gear that mm -hmm. drives this reg wheel. Right, and you just put, you've got a bearing pushed up against that. That's got friction. That's so cool. That's it's a diamond wheel for graph for doing carbide. Yeah. So we ground that little nub on Whoa, there. Oh, look at that. That's cool. So and you've got a lot more to do, huh? Oh, yeah, we have a bunch more to do. So we just drop this guy in there. Make sure you pull it against the top. The top, right. right. That wheel will actually, That's it's so actually good. at an angle, so it actually pulls the stem back against the stock. Really? So it keeps it seated against See, the stock. Yeah, right. It's amazing. Yeah, this is all their own, their custom interface that they have themselves. Yeah. And that, that's a diamond wheel, so it doesn't need dress. Well, we actually dress quite frequently. Really? Because the issue we have is we need a very square corner okay. for that ruby to sit. Yeah. So our maximum allowable radius is less than 5,000. Okay, on the shoulder. On the shoulder. Okay. So we're, we're constantly dressing that wheel to really? get that to a minimum. So the, the little uh, shoulder we saw is to actually hold the sphere right that's cool so all the spheres have holes in them yep and then that little nub fits in that hole really and it's a press fit no okay it's, it's not press fit okay it's bonded. interesting folks look at this it's so funny because when i talked to them about swinging by i didn't really know or appreciate is this machining you know we just did orange bites which is big chunks of dura bar you know horizontal machining centers material removal and this is like the extreme opposite sure. precision fast small parts the largest stock that we deal with on a regular basis is two and three quarters of an inch yeah that's and right. that's like one part right. everything else is is generally smaller than half an inch yeah that's awesome so brother not a speedio but a okay the tcs yeah we this was this was like one of the last machines they had before the speedio okay yeah we've had this machine for three years cool Oh, you got a four or it's, it's a, a fifth axis? It's a, it's, a, it's a four plus one. Okay. So it'll do simultaneous four and the fifth is just indexing. Inde yep. There In all cool. honesty, before we had this machine, I don't know how we did half of the custom parts. We used to have to do like multiple setups on the bridge port. Yeah. And this, you just, you program it in and we, let it run. We, I, more and more and more I've seen that. Like yeah. just even if it's posi positioning to save setups. And, and uh, in all honesty, the cost of this machine with the indexer yeah. was really not that bad at all. That's cool. Super fast. Interesting. So you got yeah. a, you got a pro base. What, who is yeah, which the wireless touch tool. Okay. And we also have the. We use Bloom on these machines. Okay. Not Renishaw, but Bloom. Yeah, sure. Yeah. But it's still it's funny because I for some reason always think of the Bloom as being the non-contact. Because, you know the laser, the light bar versions. Well, when we get to the other machines, okay. they all have lasers. On cool, them. cool. So, what's this machine do for you guys? What kind of parts? Basically, of the of the five milling machines we have, this yep. is the only one that cuts metal. Oh, really? Yeah. So those little aluminum tops that adapt into the CMM—that's something you'd make here? No, that's on the mill turn. That's a lathe part. That's a lathe part. Oh, the man. whole thing, 100% lathe part. Insane. Yeah, that's cool. And we're holding, you know, we're holding tolerances. We're trying to hold a symbol tolerances of those little plates of one thou. Yeah. That's after assembly. Yeah. So we're Dialed holding in. tight tolerances over there. Cool. And you said this is the new. This Akuma? is uh, We just got this about a month ago. Wow. We had an old Akuma Captain L370. Okay. Space turn, huh? That's fancy. I can't see a darn thing. Yeah, it'll depends on what it's doing right now, but twin turret, twin turret, uh, milling y-axis. Yeah, yeah, amazing. That awesome. way we're doing everything. Like, like I said, we had a, we had the captain before, uh -huh. which was a single spindle. Yep. Everything was two off. Yeah. So we upgraded to this. It's all one operation. Like this, this is what we're making right now. Really? All in one operation. Oh, so this is the type you see where you've got probes sticking out multiple directions. Right. Very cool. Oh yeah, I totally get why that's uh, mill turning. You would? Did you have mill turn, or did you, did you have any live tooling on? Yeah, the, it was live. The okay. other mach the machine was live, but yep. going from two setups to a single setup, getting finished parts. Looks like it's doing 
live milling, rigid tapping, rotating the part to tap all four facelifts. So cool. Looks like a VNMG or something to do some maybe finish profiling. Yeah. You got a pretty good sized face mill on one of those positions. That's a three. That's a three-inch Iskar shell mill. Really? And we use that to guarantee flatness across. Really? Instead of interpolating the flat mm -hmm. or using the Y, mm -hmm. we just take the big shell mill and went across. That's awesome. And it does a part sketcher? No part sketcher. No. Okay. No. The future of this machine is there's going to be a robot here uh, this time next year. Okay. So, or sooner. Yeah. So where did the part go? Did it fall down? No, it stopped. Ah, okay. You don't have a. You don't have to. That's nice. You've got a way to work hold it on the second op. Right. So I, it's it's done. You want to look at? Can I just film the turret? That'd be cool. Come it up. Oh, you got the robotic door. Wow, really open machine. Yeah. It's fast. already set up for the robot. All the interface is there. We just gotta get it. Sweet. Look at that. Find that face mill. Yeah, no, there it is. I can index insane. that around if you want. It's insane. <laughs> Did the uh, Okuma AEs tell you that's too big to run in there? No, you're allowed to. That's I cool. didn't ask. Yeah. <laughs> that's super cool. Wow. Oh, so you've got a 5C that's just got a floor into it? This is a custom machine pocket that holds your, does the transfer yeah, holds it? Yeah, it's custom. Yeah. An emergency call it was filled out. Yep, it's awesome. Cool. So you happy so far? Yeah, I love it. I absolutely love it. Yeah. Did you look at the, like, Genos line? I guess that's probably a level below. It's a level below. Yeah. It's a funny story that... The way that we get this whole project started, we we're actually looking for a chip conveyor for our old Akuma. <laughs> Funny how that happens. And the salesman is like, well, you know, we have this machine that was ordered by somebody and they backed out of the deal, so we can give you a smoking deal on this. Boom. Here it is. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's awesome. I mean, folks, look at this. There's not even that much space and they've got a brother, a lathe, and then take a look. Holy cow. Two Speedios and a uh, former you know, predecessor. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's awesome. Look at that picture. It's doing interpolation there? Right, so the way we don't actually drill the holes, yeah. we're grinding them in a helical motion. With an abrasive, not a cutting. With a diamond. Um, Interesting. I'll have to get one of the diamond tools to show yeah. you, but it's essentially the same as a grinding wheel. Mm -hmm. The metal bond diamond matrix yep. little little tool that we use. Yep. And uh, that's a fifty thousand RPM pneumatic it's speeder. It's a speeder, right? Yeah. Insane. Fifty thousand. And, and we run oil on all these machines. We mean, as coolant or synthetic oil as coolant. Yeah. Okay. So there's probably a ten or fifteen k spindle to start with, and then these it, are twenty seven. Wow. But it's not using the spindle at all. It's totally a... No, some of the bigger diamond tools, mm -hmm. the biggest diamond tool we use is five millimeters. That's the big. smallest is 0.4. That's small. So anything that is above two millimeter, we use the 27,000. Yep. Anything below that, we use the pneumatic. Pneumatic, yeah. And yeah, I'm, sure the, I'm sure the run out is just nothing on that. Wow. Yeah, and on, on these brothers, if we're using the standard spindle, yep. it's always flat out. It's always 27,000. Yeah. And it'll run for hours that way. What's the mighty bite at the top holding? Is that a stone to address the... Okay, that's a dressing stone. It is. Look at so, that, so cool. So after every hole, it comes over and it'll dress the tool. Then it goes over, you can see the laser in the back corner. Yep. So it measures the wear. That is awesome. It's so simple. It's literally an India stone or something. It's held in with a toe clamp and you just program it to dress. Right. That's and awesome. The, the macro tells it, you know, every time it goes to address again, it, it increments it, over it, a certain amount. Yep. And then when it reaches its limit, it'll stop and it'll it'll put up in a, a little message that says change stone. <laughs> and in wow. the program, the operator will just set two variables, start here, end here. 
That's all they do. Wow. How is this held down? Vacuum. Oh, it's a vacuum plate. Okay. It's a vacuum plate. Interesting. That's really simple. And it doesn't even have to be located that well because you're probing everything. That's to be within right. a certain... It's, I mean, it locates within a dial. Yeah. But... But you're getting your, your you data know, we're, from... We're trying the whole centering to half a dial. Yeah. So... That's really cool. We just want to ensure everything. And offline, you do all this offline and just quickly swap it out and you're good to go. Right. Love it. That's cool. Yeah, so these are all basically the same. That's all these machines do all day, every day. Wow. And so you're, the, the balls are carbide, ruby, what? Material. Every, uh, ruby, ceramic, silica nitride are the three primary. Okay. So we do zirconia, okay. sapphire, carbide, oh, wow. hard chrome steel. What's the hardest on a Rockwell? Silica nitride. How hard is that? I would have to look it up. It's like 67, 68. Yeah. And, and same thing? You grind into it? Right, yeah. I, I guess grinding it. could, yeah. Yeah. And you can, I have not done it, you can hard mill, I know, 60, 65 Rockwell with, with carbide, with coating. Right. And grinding is way better, easier. Yeah, we, Still uh, we do some hard chrome steel. Yeah. Essentially ball bearings that we put holes in. And we buy the, some special tools from OSG. Yeah. Yeah, I think really small cuts. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, it's really cool. Let me go grab one of these, some of these diamond tools to show cool. you. The biggest thing is a lot of do is that control our tolerances yeah the quality All of the product mm -hmm. you know we're able to run larger batches and we're taking our own stems and house we're, it's all you right we're controlling our own tolerance on both ends yep so and not only are we now you know drilling our own spears but we also do custom disc probes custom what disc probes so we'll take a spear and we'll basically mill off two sides of it and have this like a disc Really? Yeah, so if you need to get down inside something and measure something. Oh, no you know, kidding. Then wow. you can do that. Huh. So, but people are always asking for like custom applications, different sizes, different thicknesses. Mm -hmm. No problem, that's what you do. Exactly. That's awesome. So, this is one of those speeders? Yeah, one of the spindles. Wow. Oh, I like that. Huh, that's cool. We refer to this as the roundy round. Yeah. And uh, it basically, you know, a lot of our stuff we keep in here, hardware, um, drills, and yeah. drills, anything. Sure. We're trying to go more to the MSC cabinet. Um, Do they stock it for you? They will yeah. if we want them to, yeah. but yeah. Like generally I do it. Yeah. But, what you got? So, yeah. so these are the diamond tools. So oh, I didn't realize it's a diamond. That's the, okay, it's a diamond grind. So that's wow. a three millimeter. Yep. Huh. Then this, wow, is a uh, for the smaller holes. Wow, that's cool. That's um, 1.2. Then the smallest one we use on a regular basis. Look at that. That's insane. 0.4. Wow. So, and what size ball is that drilling into? We use this to drill into a one and a half or a one millimeter. Deep. Wow. One millimeter ball. That's cool. Yeah. Then we can go look at the ultrasonic. Yeah. Totally. Oh, oh a whole line of twist? Oh my god. What is, what is this? Okay, so this is actually an ultrasonic mill. Okay. Which means if you look at that holder, that tool holder in there. Okay. So the red ring on the spindle nose yeah. is transferring energy to a magnet in the holder. And then the part that actually holds the tool in the bottom is actually oscillating ultrasonically what? between 16 and 30,000 hertz. What? So it's kind of a chipping action. Really? So that's grinding the, the that's, hollowing out a spear. So we're that's making. The, uh, whoa. So you start with a spear. What is the ceramic? Ceramic. Holy cow. What's this for? I don't even know, but all, all I know is that you got to. We're, we're already... making it for an oil field supplier. Okay. And they needed this. We designed it for them, and but it's some metrology tool. It's some. Yeah, it's definitely for a CMM. Okay. 
Some, just... some oil field product. Wow. What's this thing? This is a tool presetter. Oh, okay. That's but awesome. really what we use it for is to check concentricity on the little tools. <laughs> because those little solid tools I showed you, oh my gosh. we can actually bend them to get them concentric. Yeah, you, try, you, you tap it in. Right. Wow. That's insane. Ultrasonic milk. So what is the point? You mentioned it has this percussion action. What's the point of that? It's just the way it wants to it, cut the It material? makes the process a lot quicker. Really? Right. So, huh. Well, what the brothers can do, this does in about 60% of the time. Wow. Huh. The only drawback is, is for what this one machine costs, I can buy three of those. Right. Wow. So, there's definitely applications like this one in particular yeah. where you need it. So because there's so much material to remove? There's so much material to remove, the bigger tools. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. This one has um, high pressure through the spindle coolant. Yep. Do other people, do normal people use this as a mill? Uh, they make a version of this that's not ultrasonic. Okay. It's a high speed 20, or uh, it's a 200 millimeter travel. It's really small. Yeah, yeah. It's huh. like less than eight inches. But for square. medical, small medical work yeah, or something do, high end. The, the thing that, the industry that uses these machines the most yeah. is dental implants. Yeah, implants, got it. Yeah. Interesting. And we actually had to special order this machine as a three axis because we needed table space. The five you lose. The, the five, it kind of normally came as a five. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. Huh. Huh. And we, we bought this machine because we used to buy all of our balls and all of our stems from outside sources. Yep. All the balls came from overseas, and supply got to be an issue. Okay. And the other reason we got into grinding is because when we get the balls with holes already in them from suppliers, their tolerances oh. aren't always that great. Oh. And if we tried to complain to them, coming from Switzerland, they'd say, that's what we have. Yeah. You can wait, you know, six to eight weeks for a new batch or accept those. Interesting. That's why we brought the grinding of the stems in, because we used to grind them per batch. Okay. to make sure they fit. Yep, yep. Then came the problem with supply of the rubies themselves. That's when we bought this machine. Okay. So that we could make them ourselves. So you buy a ru you buy a, a sphere, a ruby sphere, and then you put the hole in it. Right. And then you grind the stem. You control the whole process, the whole workflow. Right, we, we, we control all of it. Wow. Huh. Is, it, is the ruby a uh, industrial, industrially yeah, made it's, ruby? It's industrial. Yeah, industrial. Yeah. That's cool. Holy cow. We just walked past a whole bunch of Swiss lays. Yeah. So we just added our fourth Swiss machine. So Same. you see all the little parts that go yeah. on that assembly in there. Yeah. So it just tends to lend itself to a Swiss machine. Totally. What are you making? Uh, this part. Oh, it's the, okay, sure. The, the so the, the stem will go in here, the ball goes into the stem. Yep. That's an M2 thread. Wow, yeah, the tiny. It just cranks them out. It just cranks them out. Here comes one. It's quite odd to see a blade where the right is the uh, headstock. Yeah, it takes a little bit to get used to. Swift lays. Coolest machines and how they work, most difficult to film. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, everything's so yeah, small. Yeah, everything's so tight. Yeah. But you got a huge bar feeder on it and God grief! This can't yeah, run for. Yeah, we machine used. I just just fed in a piece. It looked like that's cool. Yeah, it's all completely encased. Mm -hmm. How do you guys program the Swiss? You know, uh, we recently started using a cam to software. Yeah. But used to up until about a year ago, everything was by hand. By hand. What do you cam to use? Feature cam. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Swiss Swiss cam is not awesome. It's not. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of work to do on right. it. More of the same? More of the same. Look at the clearance right up there. Oh my god, it's so close. That's where it dumps the rims. Oh, leftovers? Yeah. Got it. What do you call it? A rim, just a remnant? Remnant. Yeah. Oh yeah, there you go. You see the work piece coming in? Cool. Oh yeah, there that's you go. what we're making. These are the M5 versions. I, it's so funny. These look huge now. Yeah, they're gigantic. These are parts. the big ones. Right. That actually is a huge. Um, what do you call it? A shank or shaft? Oh yeah, the whole stem. size, six millimeters. What that is? Yeah, that's really big though. Yeah, this is for oh. the bigger machines. 
weird. I don't think about that. I guess you, if you have a, what's the longest extension you got made? The longest extension we've made, I like, think, or was normally. the normal one. Oh, uh, normal standard. We try to keep under 300 millimeters. Uh, so was that 15, uh, 4, 12 inches? Yeah, it's about 12 inches. Yeah, okay. But we that's so long. The longest one we made was 48 inches. What? Yeah. For some big long board. What was the diameter? 20 millimeter out of oh, wow. carbon fiber titanium. Whoa. That's cool. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, can we go look at more of the Finnish like, type products so we can get a yeah. better idea what some of these are? Sure. Yeah, yeah when, I, when I started 19 years ago, the owner ran the machine. Yeah. And we oh, had two of these. Familiar with that. That grinder and that bridge port, that was it. Serious? Wow. <laughs> so all those little wrench holes you see in those bases, mm -hmm. by hand on the bridge port after two operations on this. Oh my God. You but, still have it though. Look at that. Well, it's been relegated to a polishing machine at this point. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's funny. Cool. HLV, nice. HLV eight. Yeah, we got that last year. Oh really? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, we we never had a manual lathe until last year. Funny. And we've always like, I just wish I could just put something yeah. on and do something real quick. So one of the other things that's unique about us is we don't actually have a lot of finished product on the shelf. Mm -hmm. We have all the components. Okay. So someone sends in an order, then we put it together. You put it together. That day. Wow. So basically the way it works is if you get your order in by noon, we can generally have you apart to your specifications that day. You'll assemble it and ship it. That, that yeah, quick same day. Wow, that's right. cool. These are a lot of the like extensions and accessories. Oh, look at that. Can I take it? Yeah, go ahead. Look at that. That's, that's carbon fiber? So that's carbon fiber with the titanium end caps. Interesting. It's so light. It's so light. That's insane. I can't believe that this goes on the end of a probe. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the machine we have is a small one. Right, right. There's the, uh, like the cube that you saw we're making out there it goes on these bigger adapter plates where are they oh there yeah they so here's like these are more these are parts that will come off the akuma then right that's yeah, the, actually that's the biggest part we make that's it that's funny yeah, it's one of the vast machines uh it's like the bigger cmms with the bigger probe heads okay so what this plate is yep like that oh yeah I super mean, cool. some of those are massive right so you can have yeah, right so coming everywhere the size of a car and that's just a that's some magnet no, these those are the, these are the, the rollers. Points. So the head itself has two spheres. Okay. And they sit on either side of those in three places. Got it. That keeps it flat. Yeah, right. Yeah. So this yeah, is, so you're, this is incredibly important because there's a made in shoulder that dictates the perpendicularity of the tool coming off that cube. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. But you don't have to grind that. It's machined. It's it machined. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Yes, and we sell everything from the individual stylite, all the accessories. We also sell like ferrule arm accessories. Oh yeah, okay. You know, uh, all that stuff. Anything that really has to do with measuring, we have probably made it or you know do. Are ferrule arms use a similar end effector type thing. Yeah. Okay. They have like a. It's just like a. I don't know if we have any. Well, this is a ferro adapter. Huh. To use a One standard. Style. Oh yeah, to convert it. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Do you? Is there a difference when you're using a CMM on the? probe tip when you're doing measuring versus uh, what do they call it when you're surfacing on it to, to back plot or, or to create a, a cloud point I get, say the question again if you put a 3d part down yeah a three inch part on the CMM some CMMs I believe can actually follow along it yes is there a difference in the probe tip you use when you do that no, no. okay no. same thing yeah. so, and so what's the difference between a probe t why would you buy a carbide versus a silicon nitride versus a ruby versus so silicon nitride or uh, silicon nitride lasts longer than ruby. Okay. It doesn't tend longer. to pick up material. Like oh. if you scan the same part in the same trace mm -hmm. enough times, ruby's ceramic will start to pick up the material of the part it measures. Uh, yeah, yeah. Really? The aluminum, the cast iron, whatever that is. So wow. silicon nitride, it'll still do it, but it lasts three to five times longer. Holy cow! So in that case, you can't clean the ruby. It's a, it's a wear item; it has to be discarded. Like yeah, you don't see the aluminum. Yeah, these are the, basically these are all wear. Wear, yeah. Because yeah, they will eventually they either get broke or they wear out. 
Right. Yeah. We were, I was talking to with some mid to Toyota sales rep, and it's funny as a small job shop, you know, I don't think about dial test indicator probe tips wearing, but they sell Ruby test yeah. indicator probe tips now because if you're sliding the same part or a part underneath it every ten seconds, there's wear. Right. For sure. Especially right. if you're using something like cast or cast iron or yeah. something like that. It, Very it cool. Wears it out a lot faster. Wow. So what's next? Just more of the same? You guys it looks like you guys have grown a lot in terms of the new equipment. Yeah, our our, I think uh, the owner told us that our current growth rate, we should double in five years. Wow. So. Wow. Good for you guys. Yeah. Staying busy. Cool. It's just funny because it's not, it's, it's so out there to, to me. All the requirements of all, you know, I just looked in a bin and saw, you know, this relatively large, one of them had a tip on it. Yeah. One of these had a. Uh, Here's a. Uh, look at that. That's cool. Now that's a steel. That's carbide shaft. Carbide shaft. Silicon nitride. So that is a drill. That's a drilled ball. Yes. Interesting. Wow. We do all that. That's what you do. Yeah. The adapter. So why would you? This is incredibly heavy. What's the? Is it less expensive than the other options? No. Flexible. It's, it's basically you need you need to reach in something deep. Mm -hmm. You need rigidity. What is the tolerance between the mating surface here and the end of the ball? Is that something you have to, is that critical? Lengthwise mm -hmm. or we hold it within five thou. Okay, so that's something that the machine just sort of calibrates. Yeah, it, for. The, see that's the beauty of these parts mm -hmm. is as long as that ball is spherical, yep. it doesn't really matter where it's at, the computer compensates, compensates for it. It knows where yeah. in space it because is. Because it can pick up, got it. Right. Interesting. It really becomes an issue if, if these probes, probes get really long because mm -hmm. you got to make sure that you're not shanking out up here somewhere what do you mean? Well, if it's if the probe's not straight or your hole's not straight, mm -hmm. you need to make sure that it's oh, hitting the ball, not, not the shank. Sure. Right. Well, and I assume too, it doesn't take very much to get sag from gravity if it's in horizontal orientation, or sag from the material. Uh, it actually takes quite a bit on those okay. bigger bast heads. Okay. Because they have an actual balancing system in them. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. See, when we were at uh, Orange Vice this morning. They have service grinders now. Their service grinder. They don't even balance their wheels. It's automatically balanced. It's a computer system that automatically moves the weights. Right? Yes. Insane. Yeah, Are you that's serious? Pretty, that's pretty cool. Right. Super cool. Yeah, this so looks more these like... These probably look more familiar. Yeah, this to is what, my uh, poor man's yeah, normal exactly. world. Yeah. So that's a run a shot cross-reference part. Okay, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So this is something you would keep kind of on the shelf. Exactly, because cool. it's, it's probably one of the most commonly bought. It's funny. I never paid attention, but now I can see it. Yeah. That is... So you grind this ceramic down... Yep. And, and then you just seal that ball on there. That's so cool. So it doesn't, how critical is it that the ball is centered to the, to... That, that's more critical. It is critical, okay. Right, and there's actually, there's a formula based, you know, shaft size to ball size. Okay. That we maintain, so it's not a consistent tolerance. Okay. Although when we grind everything, concentricity of the cylinder and the hole and everything mm -hmm. is less than half a thousandths. Yep. So... Super cool. So it's funny, I don't want to break this. I'm not going to break it, but could I break this right now if I just use my thumb and push? I don't think so. No, it's a pretty strong. Yeah, possi no. Possibly, but you can try. <laughs> no, I don't want to. That's too weird. But when I broke <laughs> we'll it. We'll send you the bill. <laughs> um, I'll write you a check. Yeah. Um, when I crashed it in the Z on my Haas, I mean, it left a pretty b good ding in the part yeah. before it broke. Right. I, it's got some force to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Especially in the Z axis. Yeah. Because right that's now. where all the, all the strength is. Right. It's the lateral stuff that it'll usually snap. Just right, right. Yeah. Well, we, we have inspected a number of Heimer tips that we've broken. You're familiar with the Heimer yeah. tip? And they have a sheer design in them. It's a taper. So it's almost like when you push up on it, it's, I think it's intentionally helps it shear apart. Right. That way you don't shear, transfer the damage into the right. body itself. We do offer, and so does Renishaw, a weak link for machine tool probes. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. It's a little hardened piece of steel with a neck yeah. in it. Yeah, a stress riser. So it breaks that off versus cool. the stylus, usually. Really? Depends on how fast you're Do you guys have one of those here? I would, I, I, oh, I would have to so find I do, one. I do what you can put yeah. on the spot. We don't really sell is, a lot of them. Is it common? It used to be a lot more common. Yeah. Yeah. Nowadays, yeah. people really don't. You know, it's funny, because I'm, as a small shop you know, entrepreneur, I, I care a lot about blowing 100 bucks, but now it's, it's less, it doesn't bother me as much anymore. You know, right. we broke, if we break two a year, Stinks, but oh, you know, what are you yeah. gonna do? The worst part is frankly the time to get the new one dialed in, but we've gotten that down pretty quick too. Yeah, cool. 
All right. I mean, because all of our mills out there have them on there, and there's been times where Do we you break, ever break them. them? Do oh, you right. ever break them? That's awesome. That's we funny. Break them, and we just run in here to these guys and say, "I need another one of these." When we were uh, we toured the Haas factory a few months ago, and they've got the vending machine, which yeah. you know you see your pack inserts, you see your drills, but then they had a they had a, a slot in the vending machine for probe tips. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Yeah, that is funny. Cool. Hey guys, thank you very much for the tour. Hope you guys enjoyed something totally different, but really pretty cool stuff. Appreciate it, man. Thanks. Right, thank you. Cool. Take care.